If you had to, cho- if you had to choose a route to go, which one would it be? Charlemagne route <laughs> or the Joe Button route? So they're two completely different routes. Exactly. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I love everything that Charlemagne has done. Uh, Charlemagne aligning himself with iHeart. He now has his publishing company. He's done television. He knows that he has to politic a little bit. Mm. And he's getting where he needs to go. Mm-hmm. Joe, on the other hand, um, I think, and I know the word is is awful, but is more of the narcissist boss route mm. where I can do this. If anyone else can do it, I can do it, right? Um, can we say another word? Yeah, so I don't, I don't, I don't know another word. That? Yeah, I don't want to get lost in that because it is two different routes. And I'm not going to lie. Joe is running an empire as his own self. Here's the difference, right? Actually, here's the difference. Scratch everything I just said. Charlemagne came up on radio. Mm-hmm. Charlemagne came up in radio, so worked with Wendy Williams, worked under corporations that he had to clock in and clock out 20 plus years before he became an entrepreneur. Mm. Joe is an artist. Mm. An artist is always for self. Yo, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Mr. J. Hill, and welcome to another episode of the J. Hill Podcast. But right now, I want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor, that's Top Dog Law. So look, man, if you suffer from medical malpractice, a slip and fall, especially a car accident, make sure you call my guy Top Dog Law. That's Top Dog Law on Instagram and topdoglaw.com. Look, if you check out his Instagram, you'll see he uploading big checks. I mean, like every day. I ain't talking about the little ones. The big ones. So shout out to my guy, Top Dog Law, topdoglaw.com. Get that money. I know I'm trying to get it. Ladies especially make their own drinks because if you get drunk, however you get drunk. Where are you from, Wakanda? No. In America? No. I'm Come from, on. I'm from Baltimore. So what happened is we got to think That's called, not how they say Baltimore. That's, by the way, no, it's Baltimore. No, I'm educated. <laughs> but being from Baltimore, you pour your own poison, mm-hmm. you get yourself drunk. So whatever you say or however you come out, you did that. Mm. You feel me? Well, I I asked you to make me a you drink, it, so there's ahead. consent there. Right. Hello, it's right. giving consent. It's giving consent. Man. I don't want no none of that though. I'm, I'm, gonna do, I'm gonna do a little. I actually, so I really actually like club soda or water, but oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm opening it for you. I'm yeah, because these nails, if it breaks, Yo, the, um, then you would have to pay for my nails. Yeah, I got you. <laughs> I, I, I could have did that for you. Then. Thank you. I Just a splash, gracias. Right. How you um? How you feeling? How 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 was everything? I know is it. I'm always good. I mean, I had a, a busy day of work today, so you know that's why I was like, and I hate being late. This is our first time. Ah, meeting, yeah. Yeah, so like, but I feel like I've first off the fact that you knew I was in Atlanta before I even posted I was in Atlanta last time. I said, sir, are you in the airport? Do no. you see me or do I need security while I'm in Atlanta now? That was a little weird. I, that's the only reason why I told you who told me because at first I didn't want to tell you because I didn't want it to be weird. No, it's fine now because because when I when I went to the studio and linked with him, he was like, "Yeah, that's my young boy." I went to with him like I yeah. love everything he do. like I said, and we can say it. Cannon spoke highly of you. Oh man, I, man, I, Cannon spoke highly of you, and I've known him for years. And when I was like, "Who who does Jay Hill motherfucker is?" Yeah, nah, he nah. was like, "Nah, that he he's good people," and I think we've been trying to connect. Every other time I come to Atlanta, Atlanta's actually like one of those cities. So I went to high school here, mm-hmm. um, and then I came back here as an adult. So just a lot of my friends are here. Mm. And so when, I've been in New York for 10 years now, but I'm from Orlando. And so I when I come- I from Orlando. Bowl 7, Chopper City, blah, blah, blah. Okay. But when I come to Atlanta, sometimes I don't want to work. Makes sense. And I just want to be around my friends. My friends my friends make me happy and all those things. But this is your podcast. I don't know how you intro and start it. I don't want to. Okay. I, I was just going to say on Mandy. Everything. I didn't want to like, <laughs> I didn't want to like short change. I could say Mandy B. Sometimes I get yeah. comfortable. I say Mandy. I'm That's say fine. Mandy. That's all fine. Right. So look, I usually don't do this like intro thing. Oh, you don't? I usually, no, no. I like structure. So no, I'm no, like, no. where is no, that? No, no. I've just started. I've just started doing intros. Okay. So. Let's get it started. You ready to get popping? Let's get it popping. Yo, what's popping? You know what time it is. Your boy, Mr. J Hill. J Hill Podcast in the building. Yo, this guest right here, I mean, legendary. One of the goats. Like, when it comes to this podcasting thing, I mean, I feel like you've been doing this since 2017. Uh, yeah, at the, at the end of 2016, actually. 
See? Yeah. She been doing podcasting. I mean, podcasting. A lot of people don't understand podcasting is audio. So, shameless plug, make sure you listen to the audio right now. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe to all that, man. Drop a rate and all that stuff. She been doing this podcast thing before it became a thing. Before we started doing it on video, you was doing podcasting, mm. right? Doing audio. Audio only. Strictly audio. I mean, she's been everywhere. I mean, on G- Joe Button Network. You had uh, she got a. That. I mean, I, I mean, I, I mean, no, I, I said everywhere. Oh. Let me finish. Let okay. me finish. You know, all my <laughs> ladies and, and, and a lot of the fellas, I'm pretty sure y'all seen horrible decisions. I mean, crazy conversations. Uh, see, the thing is, uh, it's, listen, tours everywhere. And when I say it's a pleasure to talk to you, like, I know we've been talking, like, we already knew each other. But, like, I do want to let you know how much I respect what you got going on, how much yeah. I love you got going on, how much I admire it. I don't give you a woman or a man. Like, I really love what you got going on. You know what I'm saying? Mandy B is in the building, guys. I appreciate that. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, Sorry, boop. not me giving my own air horn. Nah, facts, facts. Hey, I'm in the building. We here. Um, but also, yeah. I mean, you about to get kind of the real me. I've been potting since 11 a.m. today. So, what's up? Let's talk. Let's yeah. get into it. I want to... um. And I'm glad that I finally got to also make it here. Because like I said, I know we've been going back and forth and we've missed each other. But mm. I'm glad we can make this happen. Yo, I say I appreciate you again. Because it, it's so much to learn from you. It's so much to learn. And I feel like you're still learning. You're still growing. Oh, absolutely. As crazy as it is. Um, It's weird because I didn't think. And, and, and I was just talking to a friend of mine, too. And, and he was like, you know, I look at. I'm able to to gauge my life on five years, five year increments, right? And from the pandemic to me completing, I just completed college in 2018. Congratulations. And I was supposed to be an accountant. That's where my life was going. Mm. I didn't think that podcasting was going to be my full time <laughs> gig um, or that I would be able to monetize and show up as myself. Mm. Um, I think going through school allowed me to learn the business of this shit. Like, I kind of, listen, people don't like people who ain't humble, and I hate the word humble, but, like, I bust my ass with this shit. So, for anybody listening who even started a podcast, people don't realize, A, how expensive it is, Mm. how much work it is, how you got to build your team, all the shit. I do this for two shows weekly, Mm. five times a week, from Patreon to regular episodes. Both of my shows have six- and seven-figure deals, and I had another show, uh, Period Sis, uh, I did that on my own, and that was for a subscri- subscription box company that I had. And then in 2016, that's why I say 2016, um, I had a podcast called Point Points Taken with Lamar Woodley, mm. uh, who is a Pittsburgh Steeler. We had a sports podcast. Um, and Thousand, who was a radio personality in Pittsburgh. And so we did that remote before remote was a thing because we all lived in different places. But he was still in the in the NFL at, its, at the time. He was with the Cardinals. And we were just trying to make it fucking work. We didn't know what the fuck we was doing. So it didn't last long. And then Weezy came to me and had the idea for us to have this sex podcast. And at the time, I was like, yeah. Yo. I said, I ain't got no shame in my game. And we did it. And here we are now. And it blew up. It did. Unexpectedly. I'm not going to lie. And I say this all the time. When she came to me, I was in my last semester um, or heading into my last year of college. And I was like, listen, I'm about to be an accountant. I'm about to have a career. And I spent most of my 20s as a bartender, um, a job that my Jamaican-ass daddy did not feel like was a real job. Mm. He kept asking me, when are you going to get a real job? Um, and so coming from finally receiving my my degrees, I got two degrees in four years, busted my ass, became an accountant, and then heard, like, let's start this podcast. Literally, I was like, all right, well, I'll do it for a little bit, but once I get into my career, if this isn't making me money, I'm not looking to have a hobby. Mm-hmm. My hobby is getting lit, hanging, spending time with my friends and traveling. Thanks. Like, I found a love in traveling. That's my hobby. So a podcast, I was like, girl, if it ain't making money, it don't make sense. Mm. And literally within, yeah, the first year, we did our first live show. Um, and in full scope, it took one year. We signed to Loudspeaker Networks. Shout out to A. King. Shout out to Charlemagne. Shout out to Chris Morrow. Uh, we signed to Loudspeakers. And from there, it just kind of created a mind of its own oh man so look 
I'm gonna get this thing started, right? Come on, outline. Like, come I on, pull like, out the like, question. I feel like we don't need to do a, a um icebreaker, but I got this icebreaker that I do with everybody. I I'm, love it. I'm a uh, I'm gonna say a word or a phrase, and I'm gonna just get get your your first thought on it. All right? Oh, God. word or phrase? Are there names here? It might be. Oh shit. Yeah, yeah for okay. sure. Okay. Uh, the first name is Joe Button. Don't Sorry, do this. I'm messing Why? With <laughs> not yet. Not yet. It's too early. <laughs> God. It's too early. It's too early. Hey. Hey, it's, it's, it's not, um, yet. not yet. Not yet, not, okay, not, 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 yet. not yet. Okay, not yet. I'm joking. I wasn't on it. I, because you said the name, it's just like, okay. I mean, you walk right into it. Nigga, but I, you said the name. I didn't say that nah, name I mean, you I said, walked in here. I mean, you said names. I'm like, oh, okay. you walked me into it. Oh, okay. No, no. Nah, nah, so, okay. Um, So, this is not on here, but this is interesting. The first thing you said was, don't sex talk me to death. Oh, I hate that. So, like, here's the thing, right? Um... In the space, like, where I really blew up. Like, prior, I was a blogger. I did sports shit. I talk my shit on Twitter all the time, but with horrible decisions, we've literally entered rooms, and we have been introduced as these hoes. Mm. These is the best hoes ever. This bitch sucked dick. <laughs> da, 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 da. And it's like, yo, thanks. But also, we run a business. We, we, we see and I both run multiple businesses. Mm. So I think that being introduced or leading with the sex talk takes away from really who we are to our core. Mm. And again, we both have teams, we both have businesses, we both managed to excel in this space on different platforms that if we sat here and within the first five minutes, I talk about how me and I suck a dick, half of the people listening aren't gonna respect me the same way. Mm. And so being in this game for seven, eight years, I just hate that that's still my introduction as if I haven't shown people that I'm so much more than that. And I say it all the time. People don't think hoes can read books. People don't think a bitch could suck a dick and have a business. Like, for whatever reason, they don't correlate to being a package deal. And so that's why when I walked in here, I've seen your content. I'm like, don't sit here and play me because mm. I'm a lot more than, than that. Mm. I mean, I still do that. But I just don't like for that to be my leading premise anymore. You sure you seen my content? Oh, I have. But also, you ain't, never mind, I ain't gonna put you on blast. I, you can't, I, go ahead, go ahead. I, you, it's nah, all right, do your thing. I mean, I mean, cause, I mean, we can sit here and talk about relationships, sex, all the things. And I don't mind that, but I think to me it's the leading of it. You know mm. what I mean? Like, we can get into it. Because I talk my shit and I stand on mine and a lot of people don't agree with my thought process on it. But I just like to not lead with that. Because I think for a lot of men who are on these microphones who don't deserve to be on microphones right now, um, I don't want this to be a battle of the sexes. I mm. think you're smarter than that. I think you're better than that. And so I don't want to, I don't, I don't like to indulge in that. There's a lot of platforms I would never go on because mm. we ain't finna do that. No, I get it. It's funny. And so like, let's, we can get into it later, but we ain't got to no, head with sure. that. I feel like, um, that's just the way of the life, way of life sometimes, right? Like the things you're popular for, people want to prejudge you. I feel like mm -hmm. even when you like, I seen a lot of your content, I feel like it's the same way because a lot of my content unbeknownst to so many people is about therapeutic conversations mm -hmm. right but those aren't the conversations that go viral so you might see the conversation that go viral the crazy conversation we just joking but a lot of times if you tap into that conversation it's so much more therapeutic. i know i dug deeper yeah, oh. i don't believe in the headlines and clickbait and that's the thing mm. like so when you see my clips i already know how to look like i ain't shit <laughs> but i'm like but you ain't listen to the 10 minutes of what that conversation really was mm, mm, you listen mm. to the 60 second reel and so where you going to respond to the 60 seconds, did you really listen to the full episode? Mm. And so, yeah, make whatever you want viral. I'm going to talk my shit still. But to me, it's still like, listen to the whole context of the conversation. I'm not for going viral, really. Mm. Even with my pods, you're not going to see much of my shit on the Shade Room or Spiritual World. Like, I get out when I get out, but it's not as viral as I, I, I think people would assume it to be for as outlandish as it is. Mm. So speaking of like just getting to know things beyond surface level, mm -hmm. right? I think one at Are one we point. Are the icebreaker? I thought you was gonna throw some. Oh no, I got more. I got oh, okay. more. I got more. I got Look, more. I'm like, where the game at? Oh Let's no, it's not. It's, you got me drinking tequila. It's what not. Game it's at? not really a game. I don't really okay. have games, but I mean, okay. it's just conversation. So I, I seen on one podcast you said, um, you you really you you want to have it in real life, right? Not look like you got it. And I was yeah. And I was wondering, what do you think about the phrase of like you know, well, people who like. They teeter the line. In what way? Like, it looked like they might be lit, but they really not lit. 
I mean, that's where we that's where we're at. Everyone mm. lives in their own reality, right? Mm. And on social media, in the public, you're only gonna portray the best version of yourself. Oh, wow. You gonna look happy even when you're not. And this is not trigger warning, and this is not to be insensitive, but there's a lot of people who are shocked at the rate of suicides recently. Mm. They're like, no way he took his own life. He was so happy, or she was so, there's no way she did that. She was so happy, and, and we've seen that it's especially over the last couple of years where you think they're happy and people are battling demons, right? Mm. Um, to me, I've just asked the grace that the audience allows me to grow in real time. Mm. I've said some bullshit and I ain't gonna hold you. Horrible decision started in 2016. I cringe and even get, get teary eyed for some of the shit that I say because I'm like, ooh, I was lying to myself. Mm. That ain't really... I was I was portraying how happy I was and how prideful I was and how I was out here getting it from these niggas. I I I. And now in therapy, I'm like, oh, who is that girl? Jeez. Um, and so Damn. I don't live by that anymore. Like, I understand that what people are given is is the version that they want you to believe, but it's not necessarily who they really are. Wow. And that's why I just love my friendships and I love getting to know people more. So when you hear horrible decisions, what do you think of now? I mean, what comes I, to your mind? I mean, growth, mm. liberation, um, horrible decisions to me is the timeline of a woman. Mm. I mean, I I was trying to figure it out, and that's the thing. We all think we know. Like I gave, I gave my pussy away to older niggas when I was younger, and I'm like now, ill, gross. I feel like I thought a man wanting to sleep with me created b value for me. It doesn't. I did things for money that I 100% regret now as a bitch with money, but I wouldn't know it, how to regret it had I not been in a different situation, right? Um, so I think it's been a journey with, with Weezy and I, specifically with me though, to be able to say, actually, there's shame there. Mm. Whatever stories I said in a couple of years ago, I can't really sit on that now. And where I sat here was like, yeah, bitches, go out and get your money. Ah, that's not in a place that I would champion now. And I so so I just ask people to allow me in real time uh, the grace to grow. We're going to get back to all of this. That's fine. Right. Um, if you had to take the route, <clears throat> and I promise you, this isn't, okay. this says more about them no, than go ahead. the question. Ask if me. you had to take the route. Would you still be a hoe? No, 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 no. <laughs> see, I'm not even. See, I, see, she's not, judging me. I'm not even on that type of time. I'm, the hell I'm out not you. on that type of time. Oh, go ahead. We could get into, but no, go ahead. On some business shit, and I say it's not. It's not really. It says more about who they are in that space, mm -hmm. and not like clickbait. But it might sound like clickbait. Whatever. If you had to, if you had to choose a route to go, which one would it be? Charlemagne route <laughs> or the Joe Button route? So they're two completely different routes. Exactly. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I love everything that Charlemagne has done. Uh, Charlemagne aligning himself with iHeart. He now has his publishing company. He's done television. He knows that he has the politic a little bit. Mm. And he's getting where he needs to go. Mm -hmm. Joe, on the other hand, um, I think, and I know the word is is awful, but is more of the narcissist boss route mm. where I can do this. If anyone else can do it, I can do it, right? Um, can we say another word? Yeah, so I don't, people don't, I don't get know lost another word. That? Yeah, I don't want to get lost in that because it is two different routes. And I'm not going to lie. Joe is running an empire as his own self. Here's the difference, right? Actually, here's the difference. Scratch everything I just said. Charlemagne came up on radio. Mm -hmm. Charlemagne came up in radio, so worked with Wendy Williams, worked under corporations that he had to clock in and clock out 20 plus years before he became an entrepreneur. Mm. Joe is an artist. Mm. An artist is always for self. An artist always wants what's best for him, wants to show up in his most creative space, and actually hates and wants to pull against the the corporate uh, blueprint for how to run things, right? And so I think in the podcasting space where both of them have excelled, there still hasn't been a blueprint specifically for black podcasting. Mm. Um, where you have, you know, uh, the, the Joe Rogans and all of the white people who have been doing this for 15, 20 plus years, this is new for us. Mm. Like the Reed just reached a 10 year milestone in having it. We, what the fuck you see motherfuckers doing for 10 years? To even be an artist and be in the game for over 10 years is an accomplishment, right? Um, I will say 
one has the help, one thinks he knows what he's doing. So if you had to choose. So but first off, just so you know, I'm a to my own horn. I worked with both. I'm the only woman outside of Ebony K. Williams to have professionally worked with both Charlemagne the God and Joe Budden. Um, I signed on with Joe as his first podcast to the Joe Budden Network, and Charlemagne brought horrible decisions on Horrible decisions, not only on to loudspeaker, but black effect mm -hmm. when he left loudspeaker. And so, or whatever his relationship is with loudspeaker, I still don't know. But as soon as he knew he was doing black effect, he reached out and said, I want horrible decisions a part of it. Um, to me, I can't say either is right or wrong. However, I can say I am still actively working in multiple ways with Charlemagne. Okay. And I am not working with Better Joe question, Biden. better question. If you had the, had it your way, would you do more independent podcast route or more deal podcast route? And you mean that by what, though? Signing to somebody. You I ain't going to hold you. Everyone starts a podcast because they want a fucking check. Mm -hmm. Like, independent, you could be doing this shit as a hobby for years before you see money. So doing shit independently, no. As soon as we know we were, we were leaving the JBN, I was like, bitch, what a deal look like? Because I'm not doing this shit for free, and this shit costs money. Mm. And mind you, the quality that Joe puts out, I knew we couldn't leave Joe and our quality diminish. That shit is expensive. Mm. We had to still put out quality video, quality audio, have a team and build that up. And so there was no, at that point, I had been potting for five, six years. And I'm making money. I done, I done been on four tours. I'm signed to WME. I'm doing this. I told Bridget, I said, we not starting from the gutter. I said, we either get a deal or this is done. Yo, this episode is sponsored by The Morning Meetup. Man, shout out to my guy, David Shines, man. He's probably one of the few people I know who actually built multiple multi-million dollar businesses, right? He created The Morning Meetup to help other entrepreneurs do the same thing. Now, listen, as an entrepreneur myself, I know how hard it can get, especially when we start making money. And we get to like this financial cap that we can't get past. And honestly, let's be real. They say it ain't what you know, it's who you know. We probably can't get past this cap because we either, one, outgrew the people around us, or two, we just being lazy and weighing in the rooms we need to be in. It's just plain and simple. But trust me, this is your time because the morning meetup is that room we got to be in. It's filled with, filled with entrepreneurs getting to it. They reading different books every month, right? They holding each other accountable. And it's just honestly just something dope to be a part of. So listen, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get to this bag, you're trying to flourish more than you've been flourishing now, you got to go to the morningmeetup.com. That's www.themorningmeetup.com and join now. Let's get to it. I'll see you there. Like, I'm not interested in doing this for free, which is where I think people also have it fucked up. Where maybe there's not a, a personal friendship there with Joe anymore. I do know and do recognize, and so for anybody who thinks that I don't, see the thing is, is not where it's at and we don't get our deal without having that tenure under the JBN. Mm. Our numbers were great. Like we had great audio numbers and video numbers that were able to, sub to substantiate a seven figure deal. Mm. A year, a year out, that doesn't happen. Podcasts can be out for two, three years and. And maybe just be able to break even. So, <laughs> full circle. Two, three years. Two, <laughs> Probably easy. need a little bit more. Easy. That. No, maybe more than that. That's what I'm saying. That's that's no, being nice. Facts, facts. That's being nice. So, to be honest, both of them run completely different operations. I still work with Charlemagne, and I wish Joe the very best in however he chooses to do business moving forward. But no, I, that's why I say eliminate the names really, and I said I I only said those names because that showed more of who they were in their profession. Fuck, I don't know if you got any deals in here. Spotify, Wondery, Apple Music. If I could sit here and get a deal under an umbrella, fuck yeah, sign mm. me up. Like this idea, and I know he speaks also, and not to keep it on him, but of ownership, right? I don't think people understand that ownership looks like a lot of your own motherfucking money. I've been sitting here really wanting to, to build a network and other shows too. And I'm like, and I'm like, but mm. but the, the, the talent want to get paid? Mm, mm, mm. The camera person got to get paid? The audio person, the post-production, the clip editor? And I've literally said, people come to me all the time. And I was like, why haven't, you, why haven't you started your own network? I said, bitch, because that's a lot of money to put out 
that I would love an iHeart to back me on. I would mm-hmm. love a Spotify or some someone to back me on. So this idea that we have to do everything all by ourselves, you know, to make it, like I hate that idea that Charlemagne don't own everything because he's partnered. Yeah. Jay-Z owned point zero something percent of the nets. Yeah. Sold that shit, created Rock, uh, Rock Nation Sports. Like, you don't have... I, I tell everyone, by the way, getting a team, a lawyer, an agent, a manager, yes, they take a percentage. I would much rather 65, 75% of something than 100% of nothing. Mm-hmm. All the time. This is fire. Okay. <laughs> Yo, we ain't even get started yet. Okay. I know. Oh, right. damn. Um, we ain't even get started. Okay, let me um, sit slow. No, you good. You good. <laughs> All right, so uh, we hear, we've been hearing this, and I want to I wanna eliminate the names because this yep. ain't really about the mess. I know people would love it. But it's really about you. Go ahead and click big. Go ahead, Reddit. Chop <laughs> it up. Get so, your think pieces going. If you had to choose mm-hmm. between working with someone you're really close to, mm. friendship, yep. or you working with somebody who is just strictly business, which one would you choose? Strictly business. Ooh. It's funny. There's a I'll never I'm not gonna lie. Never will I ever do business with a friend again. Wow. Um, it's also strange because there's there's a dynamic of horrible decisions that the audience is familiar with. We go up and down. We've had a therapy session um, as a podcast. And then Bridget and I, in just loving each other as friends, we, we're now experiencing our hurdles is like, well, business is now getting in the middle of our friendship. And we've been in therapy. And it's like, bitch, I just want to hang out as friends. But we always talk business. And... Now, having experienced both, I will never do business with a friend. I am also a stickler. I come from um, not only school in a very corporate structured setting, that business comes first to me. I don't care about feelings. I don't care if you're sick. Somebody died. Hope they're good. Send the flowers. You still showing up or you not? And unfortunately, as a woman, I come off as completely unempathetic and a bitch. Mm. I get the bitch title. But it's like, okay, so you're not feeling well. The business still got to go. What what we going to do? And to me, I feel like, shout out to Wayno, because he brought into my mind poverty, PTSD. Mm. And I ain't have it for a lot of growing up as an adult. And now that I got it, I'm trying to keep on to it. And so, excuses, explain that poverty PTSD. Like, so grew up single parent household. Grew up food stamps, Salvation Army Christmases. Not wanting to go back. Is that what you I mean? mean? Even into my twenties, I was deciding between, okay, am I gonna eat or do I need toilet paper? Like, I don't really want to fuck this nigga, but he gonna pay my rent. Like, I hated. I was in survival mode all the time, and unfortunately, even though now I got it. It's the PTSD of ever having to go back. Mm. And so when I work with people, somebody died, okay, you could go to, but are you still going to take this call? You still going to respond to the emails? Like, and I think that that gets received so harshly, but I'm like, well, the business still has to go. And and I hate that I'm that way, but I worked in corporate for quite a long time. Like not only in the club, first off the club, I was always in a space where I knew I was replaceable. So I never felt confident in going to work. I could go to work and they'd be like, all right, bitch, we got somebody else actually. Thanks. You could go home. And then when I got to the corporate setting, you got to request time off. And sometimes they could tell you, no, nah, we actually need you. We don't approve this time off. You know what I mean? Like the idea of requesting time off because life is lifing. If it was busy season in corporate, I worked Goldman Sachs and Ernst Young. Big four, investment bank, huge. It's busy season. Take that time after after the season. Right. You know what I mean? And unfortunately, I brought that into entrepreneurship and running my own businesses. But when you're a friend with some when you're friends with somebody, they expect you to hold a lot more leniency because you feel them, right? You know where they money going, right? So you want to pay them more. You want to be more uh uh empathetic of what they're what, what's happening in life because that's your friend. But then you got business on the other side. And unfortunately, I always lean business. And so I would much rather business come first. I, I, have a, I have a bunch of teams, teams between all my businesses. I own my own studio. I have two podcasts. I have 
there's still the, the subscription box and now I'm like creating TV. I want to make sure they know we work together. I'm not your friend. We can hang out and do drinks, but to me it's business first. And so to me, I would never do business with a friend ever again. Not to bring up names. That was my problem with Joe. Joe and I have known each other for a long time and I believed in his word as a friend. And when it came down to the business, the business didn't make sense to me. So now I feel like you fucking me over as a friend. It's really hard to not take shit personally. Mm. And so I would much rather me just go into business and it's business. You, in business, we know there's snakes. In business, we know everybody about themselves, everybody want money, all that shit. No surprises. There's no surprises and if somebody fuck you over, you like, damn, That's bad how I business. go, facts. It hurts so much more when it's a friend. That's why betrayal hurts so bad because it comes from somebody that's close. It's a personal shit. So to me in business, moving forward, I don't want no personal dealings with nobody I do business with. Mm. We can start business and grow a friendship, but I would never tarnish. To me, friend, friendship means a lot to me. If you listen to my podcast, my friends my friends are first. Actually, I'm lying. Business is first. Friends is second. Family is third. Then the niggas come. You feel me? So it's like anybody that comes into my life, specifically even romantically, you 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 number four at at at, at most. My business ain't ever gonna go nowhere, and my friends are never going anywhere. And the fact that even family comes after friends is because, bitch, I got to choose my friends. Mm. Family ain't shit. I was gonna say that. Friends is the people you get to choose that do right by you, that you choose to be around. Family is just by blood. Nigga, I popped out some coochie, and now I gotta like you. No. We got the same daddy now. I gotta like you. No, so to me, friends are above. Business is my child. I don't want kids. So business is what I create. It's me. It's my passion. It's, it's, it's me. That's me. Friends, family, then then romantic. Damn. All right. Since we doing this is my last one. Yeah. Icebreaker. Since we like yeah naming things right. Top three. You gotta give me most important to least important. Love, respect, loyalty. What has to come first? Ah, uh, uh, not this question. Uh, love, respect, loyalty. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say respect at the top. Respect at the top. Why? Um, because you ain't gotta like me, but you will respect me. I know that's a common saying, but to me, you could sit here and be looking at this interview right now. You probably gonna leave comments like, "Oh, I can't stand this bitch's voice." But you listening because you know I, I'm that bitch. And so when you walk into a room, you ain't got to like me, but you're going to respect who I am, what I've done, and you know why I'm in that room, mm-hmm. right? I'll put loyalty next. Loyalty is where I place my friendships. I would like to know that if I am not in that room, that you're loyal enough to me that if somebody else is talking shit about me, you either remove yourself so that you're not in the conversation or you check them on what the fuck they're talking about. And I respect that. And that goes a long way. Again, back to respect being number one, loyalty being second. Love being last because we just had this conversation actually with Music Soul Child. Love is a word that we put so much, we put so much stock into the word love. And in the last couple years and in really getting into therapy, like is stronger than love. Mm. You can love somebody and not like them motherfuckers. You can love them and love them from a distance. You can be in love with them and not even be with them. You can love but, somebody and still hurt them. And still hurt over them. Over and over again. But when you like somebody, you want to be with that person. You want to have fun with that person. You want to chill with that person. You want to you wanna keep up with that person. Like, I like my friends. I love them too, but I fucking like them so much. Bitch, I'm going I'm to fly down here just to be down here for two days to be around you. You can love somebody. I see my family once or twice a year. Love them, but it's different. And I love them for a certain reason, but liking is way more than love. So love goes at the bottom. I think a lot of us are still trying to figure out what that word means. And I also just experienced it for the first time in my 30s with a relationship that is my first relationship as an adult. And I was like, bitch, love hurts. I don't even like that bitch. Mm. Love be hurting you, bitch. Fuck this love Mm. shit. Love will (sighs) not only have you doing crazy things, but it hurts so much, it's like, why do I want to feel this again? Mm. Why do I even? I don't understand why we're chasing that feeling. Right. Because it takes you on a roller coaster of so many things. I literally have gotten to the point. It's like ew, yuck. This is this is what this is what the fairy tales was about. Mm. Y'all can have that. Love sucks. That should go at the bottom. There's a whole lot of other 
adjectives and ways I want people to show up for me before loving. Because loving, unfortunately, is giving sometimes. We love our family, and we just got to love them. That don't mean they're good people. So, yeah, that love could go to the bottom. You said top three. Love is like top 20. Mm. That word go go down. <sighs> this is about you. I was going <laughs> to give my two cents on, but this is about you. Yo, it's no, my, give your two cents, nigga. This is back and forth. We just having a conversation. Is, is my jacket I don't okay? even like interviews like that. Nah, you look I, fly. Go ahead with nah, your little blue ass jacket. Nah, because sometimes my shit be like over, but whatever. Out here um, looking like D-Ray, but it's not a vest. It's uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, I think people put a lot of stock into respect. I feel like respect is is subjective. Respect like, is earned, not given. I feel you. Love is given. I feel you. I think people put a lot of stock in respect because if I think about it, the more I ask this question, the more I was thinking about it. And a uh-huh. lot of people always say respect first. Do they? Yeah, a lot of people. And I was just thinking, like, I think respect is so subjective because if somebody don't respect me, what does that mean? Like, what does it really, if, if you came in this room, you're not respected yep. or whatever the case may be, right? You leave. What, like, what does that mean? I feel like loyalty for me, right? I think loyalty is overall because everybody don't get loyalty. So if you get it, you got to deserve it. So if, mm. if, 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 I, if I say I mess with somebody, I fuck with somebody, right? I'm expecting them to have loyalty. So I want loyalty. So even like you said, if you're in a room, forget somebody disrespecting me. If, I, if, I'm, if I'm at the worst thing in the world, if I can't move, I can't do nothing, are you loyal enough to make sure I'm good? Are you loyal enough to make sure my family good? That's overall. Heard Respect you. can't make me no money. Heard you, but you said a one, the one word, which is why I knocked it down at, at, at notch number two. You expect loyalty. It doesn't mm. mean you're giving it. No so facts. even when you have friends, even when you have a partner, someone who's loyal, you assume won't betray you, won't step up on, won't step out on you, won't talk shit about you, right? Not necessarily what you get, but it's because we also compartmentalize people, right? Mm-hmm. So you coming in expecting a person to be loyal because you put the title on that person as a friend, a girlfriend, a partner, a family member. Them holding that title doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get loyalty. You expect it, though. For sure. And that's the problem. You can't expect someone to be loyal. Uh, humans ain't shit. People ain't shit. I'm not even going to genderize this shit. And genderize is not a word, but I made it one. Put it in the goddamn website whenever you can. But it is... it that That literal word of expecting loyalty is why I can't put it at number one. Because... People don't show up how you want them to. No, all you're the right, time. but that's right there. So it's kind of back and forth. So like you said, like you're right. I shouldn't expect nothing. That was a bad word. What I'm saying is, even when you say people don't show up like like you want them to all the time, if I could choose a okay. one, I'm saying not say, like because everybody not loyal. I'm saying if I could choose a one, okay. If, if I could have, have magic and like have a wish or something like that, it would be loyalty because if because loyalty to me is somebody showing up how you want. Loyalty mm. to me is somebody having your back. Loyalty to me is non-betrayal. Loyalty to me is loyalty to me is business without going bad. You and feel every, me? And everything you said sounds unrealistic. Yeah, but that's why I said if if I could have one. I think I if, if I, so. If you, it was a wish, you, but you asked me to rate it. Mm. It's not what I would want, right? And so that's why I said my first reason why I chose respect is because you ain't even gotta like me. <laughs> you ain't even really gotta fuck with me. But as long as you could sit here and be like, nah, but that bitch do her shit, she talk, or you could hate me, but understand why I'm in the rooms that I'm in. You could get why I, I bang with the certain people that I bang with. You could get why a Joe or a Charlemagne wants to work with me. You ain't got to like me to understand that. Mm. And so to me, respect was more on the reality scope of things. That make, Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. Let's get this, this interview started. I wanna started? Reset. Now we just getting it started? Yeah, we just getting started. Shit. I, I, I want to I wanna reset. Um... We talked a little bit. I want to ask you. It, it, it's it's going to sound. Let's, let's go ahead. We, such we, a simple question. Okay, we just we, we didn't got cute. Let's get into the mess. So it's no mess. It's not, not yet. <laughs> not me. I want to ask you how you feel about how do you, just in general. Like I feel like, and I guess I'll go paint the picture. You've been working so hard, right? Mm-hmm. And for me, not to try to read you because I don't know you that well. I don't know you at all, right? Respectfully, and you come in here first thing like no sex like I ain't, don't sex talk me to death you ain't say no sex talk i fuck with that because you left the door we can get into it later but not but not even that i'm just want to paint a picture you, you say that obviously we had the to, the work businesses the the, the 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 deals go bad you know what i'm saying and you say hearing you talk about respect and things like that uh-huh. hearing you put your business over everything hearing you like just being so all in on this 
so one, I'm thinking like I know you don't have a lot of time to chill. You don't have mm-hmm. a lot of time to get by yourself. Shit, you just start, you found love at 30. You getting into therapy. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just curious to like when your therapist asks you how you feel. I'm curious to know like how do you, how are you feeling? I, I outside know, of all of this it, other it, shit. It depends on the week. Some weeks I'll just burst into tears. Um, I mean I'm good now. I I've learned to create boundaries. Mm. So amongst like my partners, amongst my team. Um, I'm building my team. I hate text messages. I like emails. So there's certain like, which is why even when I told you, when you, I don't know if y'all see through the camera, it's nighttime. <laughs> they can see you. Yeah. I literally was like, nigga, nighttime? I check out after six. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, I wake up very early. Uh, my day starts at six. So ideally, I like my day to end at three. I have a drink or two for happy hour. By six o'clock, it's me time. I don't normally give my nights to work. Mm. And I think that I gave 70 to 80 hours a week when I was in corporate. And my decision to leave corporate was, well, if I'm giving the white man this much time and I'm I'm making this much money, let me put that shit into me and let me see. By the way, best decision I ever made. Didn't know a pandemic was coming, but still best decision. That kind of helped it, though, right? Uh, well, because I had time to sit and create more, yes. But um, I... And how I feel is day to day. I also realize my peers, when you talk about even the people that I work with, they have 10, 15 years on me. Hmm. They have careers that allowed them the room to understand that you ain't got to listen to everybody and all that. I'm 32 years old and I'm in the rooms with these people. You know what I mean? So to me, I'm still learning not to really take on all the comments. Um, Where I love that my friends understand work comes first. I hate that they understand it because I miss a lot of time and things to do with my friends because I'm like, bitch, I just got a gig. I can't make it here. Can't can't do this. Can't do that. But I also understand that if I want to live the freedom and the time in my 40s that I want with the right money, I got to work now. Mm. And I was bullshitting in my 20s. By the way, I hate that we think that the 20s is the best time of your life because, baby, I'm in my 30s now with even money and more ideas of what I want, not only from, from like, a standpoint of things. Bitch, I know what makes me orgasm. I know the type of niggas I want to fuck with. I know how to speak to them. In my 20s, I felt so empty. And I think the way we even viewed age growing up, ooh, you old, ooh, you washed, ooh, you 30s and 40s, even into the 50s and where what people are doing in their 50s, I'm mad that... We wasn't aiming to get to that. We were so excited to get in our 20s to buy a goddamn bottle of liquor. For for what reason? I don't know, because Hennessy ain't what it used to be. It don't hit for what it hit for. How we feel off liquor isn't even great. That's what we were striving for. I wish that growing up, we looked forward to our 30s, 40s, and 50s more. Because mm. this is where we're our, the best versions of ourselves. And I'm loving right now. Mm. But it's a lot of work. And am I, am I happy all the time? No. I just went through a breakup. That fucking hurts. Fuck love. You know what I mean? But also, I'm still trying to figure out what an entrepreneur looks like. I have deals that end in 2024. So when I talk to my therapist, I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to be doing in 2025. The fact that I can't see 2025 fucks me over knowing I went to school, busted my ass, so that I had a track of life. I wanted the traditional lifespan. Accounting one, accounting two, staff, like... To go up until I made partner. I, I knew that gave me a track. As an entrepreneur, I could be lit right now, not lit tomorrow. Mm, mm, mm. And now I got to figure this shit out. Or I got to go back to interviewing. Or I got to go back to working. Or, you know what I mean? And that shit scares me every day. So, like, it's, it's, a, it's a level of emotions that's up and down. But I will say, um, and not to make it dark, my grandfather just passed. Mm. My mom called me crying, and I don't want to cry because I got my makeup done. See, this is a safe space. I know. I'm just letting you know. I I believe you. I believe you. (laughs) So, literally, she called me. um, Well, my sister sister answered the phone. and was like, Mom, you can't talk right now. Grandpa just passed. We're flying to to, uh, Asheville, North Carolina. And I was like, oh, I got to be there. I looked up the flight. Because I actually had to work that weekend. And I ended up having to cancel everything. But I looked up the flight. And the flight was like 750. Economy. And in that moment, I was so grateful Mm. to just be like, 
and this don't mean shit. Purchase that goddamn flight because when my when my other grandparents passed, I wasn't able to make. There was no way. They were in Inverness. They were in Florida. My grandpa and my granddad. There's been weddings, funerals, things I could not make it to. Cause I'm like, even living in New York, it's crazy. I'm in my 20s. I'm living in New York. I'm living check to check. So the idea of just buying a last minute flight to be there for family, it was it it wasn't possible. At the time, unless I was like, nigga, unless I had to ask, like, I had to just do too much to get really the things I needed. And so in that moment, I was like, you know what? This is why I work so hard to be there for my family, to be able to do this, to be able to be there for my grandmother, to be able to be there for my mom. And in that moment, that's why I was like, okay, this shit gets rough, but I'm now able to do the things that I wish I was able to do. And the moments that you don't get again, when a person passes, that time doesn't come again for you to show up for them. Mm. And in this moment, I was like, okay, this is what I work hard for. Mm -hmm. Like, if I want to take a vacation, cool. But if I could really be there in the moments that matter to the people that I do care for and love and like, I can now do it and not blink an eye. And that, to me, is why I work so hard. So emotionally, yes, up and down. You know why I... Um I, I appreciate this conversation so much because, like, you're, like, the perfect person to talk to. Like, because I could talk to uh, Charlemagne, uh, Andrew Schultz, uh, Joe Budden, uh, Joe Rogan, uh, like, all of them. By the way, you talk to all four of them? Different blueprints, all of them. Facts. But what, all of them. what I'm saying is, like, talking to them, I feel like the conversation will be so different because they've been successful for so long. To be honest, out of that group of people, though, and who I've met, I don't know if you know, Andrew Schultz opened up for Horrible Decisions at Caroline's. Mm. For free. Off, he had something coming out. I don't know if it was a special or some or, or a podcast. And and again, he rooted for for Weezy and I for a long time. And Weezy Weezy kept that relationship, especially through Alex. And uh, she was like, I think Andrew said he'll open up for us, but if he can come on our podcast to promote whatever he got pushing. Mm. And so to see, yes, he did Guy Code. He's done MTV. He's done so much for Charlemagne over the years. When I met Andrew, he wasn't a quarter of who he is now. Mm. And he has been one of the most amazing things to witness. Mm. He, though he was on those shows, I can't say he had the money or the accolades or even the notoriety as those other three names. The Charlemagnes, the Joes, the Joe Rogans, right? He, to me, and I hate to say he got it out the gutter with his white ass, but... He has been, uh, what, what's when, an anomaly. Okay. What he's created, I ain't gonna hold you. I don't know how he puts out that much content. I don't know how he travels. He shows up for the people he works with. And I don't even talk to Andrew like that, but Andrew's an anomaly and have just, I've enjoyed seeing what he's done. But that nigga opened up for horrible decisions at Caroline's. Often so, just like I'm trying to build my shit. Maybe not Andrew, right? I, yes, let's but the say other Joe three, Button, yes. Charlemagne, Joe Rogan. I feel like Nori. Talking, yeah, Nori. Add Nori. I feel add like Gilly. Gilly. <laughs> yeah. I feel like talking to you is, is so special because you have been working so hard and to see you in this space is like not saying nobody don't deserve it, but like I could feel like I feel like I can relate to you more because of the space you're in, right? Like you been that. working so hard, like them niggas didn't had years in it. Years. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you had hit records. Facts. So I'm looking at you and I'm like, I, my question really is, I, it's, I'm so selfish right now because I just want to know personally. Like it's not even for an interview. I'm just like, just just thinking about six, not even six. Let's say three, four years ago. Ah. And you and, and looking at you right now, you gotta get emotional sometimes. Not in day. Come on. Not in day. Um. This. Look at God. I'm sorry. I don't know. No. Like. I mean. There is a God. There's a higher power. Um, I've like delved into and researched all these different religions, so I don't like to give him one name. But uh, again, I'm I still don't know necessarily what's happening right now because I'm just I just told you what's gonna happen in 2025, nigga. It's 2023, and I'm worried about where I'm gonna be at in 2025. I don't know how to still live in the moment. Mm. Um, and I also just had this conversation with my therapist. I almost hate how I view money now. And I know I read the comments. They be like, ooh, Mandy gonna let you know that she got money now. Y'all don't understand. I, I did not come. I did a lot of strange things for a piece of change. Literally, if you go three, four years ago. You know what I mean? And so to me now, how I look at money and how I'm able to swipe my card and not look at a price or how I, 
I can't show up for your birthday, but here go a cash app. I feel like, oh my God, am I becoming that person? But I know how, what money means to people. And to me, to not have necessarily that connection to money, but not wanting to go back to not having it is a fucking mind fuck for me right now. Mm. But yeah, no, I would have never guessed I would be here right now. Mm. No. Excuse me, I just... You know, we started a little late, so I had somebody out there. That's you. I fine. Gotta, I know. I'm so it's sorry. It's all good. No, you don't have to apologize. It's no. Tell them we'll do shots when they get in here. <laughs> um, <laughs> so. It's just, it's, I'll it's, pay it's, for the hour. It's, it's, if it's, you go over, I got you. It's, it's crazy to just like. See, I, look. You see I just threw that out see, there? See. But I got you. Because that was on me. It's all good. It's all good. Um, You've been in New York. Mm, Ten years. That That had to be a big part of the success. Period. I tell everybody, all these little motherfuckers that was getting on Clubhouse talking about, let me tell you how to become a, a podcaster and make millions. Like, when people come to me and be like, what did you do? How do I get there? A person in middle America ain't gonna garner the success or have the context that I did to get where I'm at. Like, for us to be, it was episode three. We were at Cast Sound Lab. Preach brought in A-King, who was also a part of Loudspeaker. Episode three, they were like, this is something special. Episode three. For us to be able to have the direct context to a Charlemagne, to all of the, the top black podcasts at the time, the Friend Zone, The Read, Brilliant Idiots, uh, Getting Wrong came about. Like, all of these pods, Joe Budden. Um, not everyone has that access. So I 100% think that if Weezy and I as two Orlando ratchet ass bitches was in Orlando and created a podcast that we 100% would not be where we are today without being placed in New York, mm. which is why I feel like I got to stay there. Like New York got a lot for this space. So you think I should just go ahead and move to New York? Like I mean, no, Atlanta coming <laughs> up. I ain't going to hold you. Atlanta cute right now. Like Atlanta's always my second home. Like Atlanta's doing great. Like you got 85 South here. Poor Minds, uh, Big Facts. You got all these studios and all these creatives. Like, And again, I grew up with a lot of these people. So I love the creative element of Atlanta. You have the Tyler Perry Studios. Lionsgate building some shit. Like, There's a lot. Atlanta I think is, Revolt is here. Maybe? Revolt is here. Yeah. Revolt is also in LA as well. I think LA is more Hollywood. But Atlanta is LA to is me terrible. where it's like, it's us. Not nah, for sure. And I love it. Nigga, this is my, I'm going on two years. I'm like a year and a couple months in. And, and, and this set didn't change about three, four times. So shout out to you. <laughs> he said, I've been, <laughs> I've been leveling up, baby, every quarter, baby. Yo, why she got to like this? I'm just saying, you look at your videos from last year, it ain't the same, nigga. How much, we'll talk about how much they paid you, because uh, I would like to know. Hey. And is it, hey, hey, we'll talk about it, because, baby, the placement is strong. It is. Shout it out is. to Ross. What y'all doing, <laughs> Bella? Hey, shout out to Rose. Yo. What's going on? Where the wings stop? I ain't got no lemon pepper in here. You got all this shit in here. We got to have lemon pepper. Bro, I can get you some food, man. That's all oh, okay. me. I got you. Okay. If you want something to eat. Well, no, nah, I'm going to Nobu after this. <laughs> a little fancy. We, we in Atlanta. But no, like this, it's been great to see you elevate as well. No, I appreciate it. Bro, nigga, you don't even follow me back. I do. I followed you back. I follow you now. Don't do that. Let me see. I came on your pod. I'll be responding to you. If I don't follow you, I'll follow you when I leave here. But, so you, yeah, <laughs> she tried to go with me but I told you I had to get I had to get the car facts on your ass. So I had to make sure you was Yo, how, how how Well, I mean, again, Atlanta small small world. So of course, like and, and again She got not, a bad review on me, guys. Like I did get one bad review, so one bad. good review. So it's giving it's giving it's giving three stars out of five. And you lucky I sat in eight. I'm years a pretty today. good review though. Like so, the fact that she got one bad hurt my soul. So fifty percent, like, but that's an F in school. That's bad. I'm telling you, like most of the times I get really good reviews. Yeah, you one for two. All I got is fifty. Uh, you know what I mean? Actually, no. Everybody else in the in the space spoke highly of you. So, yeah, okay, about sixty <laughs> percent. <laughs> the nigga said I spoke highly of you. I don't know about the women. <laughs> Oh, it's okay. Not. That was on you. Don't cut this out either. I'm not. I'm not. You better not edit this shit. I'm not. I'm not. But yeah. Yo. But yeah. Oh, oh my god. Yo, how how important this is gonna be? Like just the. Go uh, ahead. You want to pivot? Go ahead. No, nah, I don't. Oh, okay. You, I, like how important can you can you see yourself getting xed out in this podcast room? I was X'd just out by who? Like just like you know how what they say people would like be gatekeeping. 
Speaking of like, I hate gatekeepers. But I don't. And I just had this conversation. Apparently, I share too much. Gatekeepers to me don't share what their deals look like, how much money they're getting for bookings, really what the landscape is out here because they feel like if they let you know, it's going to take from them. There's a lot of fucking gatekeepers still in our space. They claim that they're for the creators and they fucking gatekeep. Like they are for themselves <laughs> and not for the creators. Why are you like that? I'm not doing anything. <laughs> and so to me, don't be out here saying you want everyone black to win or you're for the creator when you gatekeep what the opportunity could look like or you want perpetuity and shit because you feel entitled to shit or you gonna see and pay somebody or give somebody a contract that you wouldn't sign your motherfucking self. And so to me, where I, I, I went on Earn Your Leisure and I shared what the numbers look yeah, like. Bitch, I'm, I'm an accountant. I don't give a fuck. And at that time, that was like money. You gave I'll it tell up. you right now, my partner did not like that interview. She said, bitch, don't be out here telling people money. And I said, I shared my portion. I said, I made a quarter mil in this time. I didn't speak to the masses. I don't know what you're making. Bitch, I'm still at my job. I'm going to share what I'm making. But people don't like that I share numbers. When I'm on the phone, I'll be like, well, this is what this uh, network offered me. So you could probably get this. You know what I mean? To me, that is how, as, as people, we, we talk about the difference between black and white, right? We know what these fucking white content creators making a whole lot more than us. Because mm. we get on these motherfucking mics and complain about it. But you know why we can't excel and get those same deals? Because we can't keep it amongst ourselves. Black creators, for whatever reason, we feel like there's a scarcity, right? So they feel like, shit, if I share this, he gonna dig into my pocket, which means I'm gonna get less. Mm. When there's so much money to go around, I fucking hate the idea of that. But if I'm talking to my friends, and I've done this with MTV, with Revolt, hey, they looking for this, I'll send other talent their way. Just because... I ain't, I ain't pressed on no money. Money comes. Things are fruitful to me. I'm blessed to be where I'm at. But I still want everyone around me to win. And the more that I'm in the space, the more I realize that's not, but, well, that's not, not even, necessarily everybody. Not even gatekeeping. I'm. Let's say. No, gatekeeping is the motherfucking word. Let's say. Keep it dear. Blackballed, though. Because I feel like. Blackballed. When I, I ain't actually going to be no, I'm a good ass person. But no. So listen. When we, not you. That. Not you. Right. But like, let's say I'm, I'm going to come up. Right. I asked you to do an interview, right? Okay. Let's say I had a bad experience with somebody, whatever it can be, okay. right? And if that happens too much in those circles that I'm trying to penetrate, you could Pause. blackball your... Not that's you bad. That was bad. Wow, not you out here penetrating niggas. That was bad. Not niggas. <laughs> that's crazy. Yo, you got it. Ah, you said it. You said it. That's why I paused you. you all right, all right. If I'm... <laughs> You I'm trying to get into these circles, right? <laughs> you could kind of be blackballed before you even get to that. Because it's, it's like it's only a certain amount of people who are successful in this podcast. Uh, yes, game. but no. These niggas that you want to be around ain't the ones cutting the checks. And that's what I be telling everybody. Like, it's the, the relationships that I have in this space aren't the people on the mics. So you can see here and try to be friendly with all these niggas. They're not the ones that's cutting the checks for you. That's good. That's good. It's not. Like, you could be in the rooms with them. Cool. That's cute. Ooh, you got a picture with XYZ. That nigga get paid from somebody else. If that if, if that motherfucker don't like you, that ain't gonna stop the network from paying you if they see the value in you. Mm. Like, and I think that that's people's problem. Like, to me, no. Do I ever feel like I'm gonna get blackballed? No, because my work speaks for itself. I'm a good ass person and I bust my ass. And I'm not gonna half ass anything. Anything with my name on it, that's why I be like, audio right, it's video right. I'm always in the comments. Cause if something don't go out right, I'm on my team. Like, bitch, they saying something don't sound right. Fix it now. Re-upload. What's going on? I value what I put out as a person. I'll tell you right now, all these niggas, you competition. Mm. They can sit here right now. Oh, my God, you're great. Saw you grow. They don't want to see you win because now you, they feel like you're going to take numbers from them. One second. Can you go get them from me, bro? Put it on a wide shot. I'll, I'll fix it later. Look, I love this for you. Sorry. That's all good. That's all good. Sorry Hello? that I'm late. I'm, somebody coming to get you now. And we're going to still have this conversation. I'll oh, fix it. I'll fix okay, it. Okay, you'll fix it later. <laughs> um, those aren't the people you got to worry about. They can't blackball you. Those ain't the people that cut the checks. Mm. They're not. They're not. They're not the people that cut the fucking checks. So, like, go into a room and be the best version of yourself possible. Go into a room with what you can offer people, not what they can do for you. Mm. So when you want to be in these rooms with all these a little, all these all these motherfucking podcasters that be like, oh, I'm the best podcaster, I make the most money. Da, 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 da. 
Them niggas ain't the one gonna right, cut so, the check for so, you. So, you're right. Hold up, hold up. But let's not have, I, I've been talking about this a lot lately. Let's not have hindsight vision, though. Because I'm, I'm sure, I'm assuming that you felt that way at one point in time. It's felt easy for you to say that you wanted to be in the room with the elites and you want to be amongst I've them. I've always been in the room with the elites. I'm a bitch. I, I yeah, showed up. That, I showed up. That's, that's, I showed real quick, and, and I hate to say that's that I'm a cheating, bitch, bro. And that's fine. But I showed up in the room. The niggas that I fucked, you ain't wearing no sneakers. But the niggas I fucked got names on the sneakers that you wear. Mm. Like the jerseys that y'all wear, those are the people I was dealing with in my early teens and twenties. Not early teens, but late teens you. and early twenties. So like to me, it was never about being in the room. I've always been around people with names. So. Being in a room, never. Not you, in the room, but you want your name to be amongst the greats? For what? My name was in it. Did it mean my bills were paid? No. Like, being in a room means nothing to me now. Mm. So, like, when I'm in these rooms and I'm meeting the execs and I'm meeting, like, the people from Sony. See, and I don't want to keep shouting people out, like, for, for, for the rooms that I'm in. But when I meet them and, and they know that I'm more than a talent, they looking to see me win because they know I also do good business. Mm. And so to show up as a talent in a room where the business side respects you because you show up and respect their time and you don't view yourself as higher. When you in the room with all these artists and all of the talent, it's a fucking hierarchy of who's more important than the next. I don't give a fuck about being in those rooms because I also don't give a fuck how people view value me because I've been in those rooms. Everybody knows my name. And I didn't know how the fuck I was paying rent. Mm. I don't care about. And I've been there as a hoe, not as where I am now, but as a woman in a room where everybody knows me. And I'm just trying to get somebody to give me cab money. And I'm going to hop on the train because I need the extra money to pay for something else because it ain't where it's at. I don't care about. I don't believe in being blackballed by my peers. It's the execs. They do the blackballing. I treat them good, <coughs> and I mean well and do good business. Mm. Those are the only people you got to worry about. All these bottles, who is the artist who gave you these? I mean, the artist didn't give it to me. My point. That was good. You, you're good with this. My point. <laughs> you're good at this. Ross ain't give you these. <laughs> you're good at this. Whoever you know, it wasn't him. Mm. And shout out to him, because I love how he does business. But whoever got this glowy-ass sign, LED lights, all these bottles, it wasn't him. And so to me, if you do good business and you're a good person and you put out quality that someone feels like they can benefit off of, those are the people you got to worry about. Not your peers. Fuck these niggas. Mm. That's why I come on here and talk my shit. Fuck y'all. Put me on a Reddit thread. I don't give a fuck. Thought I could work with them? No. When people are worried about their own success and how they excel and where they climb the ladder, they don't really want you, They only want you to get so high because they don't want you to really outbeat them. To me, it's the people that cut the checks. It's the people that can get me in front of cameras or on the red carpets or really pay to to excel me as a brand or to give me a deal to create my own network. Because I ain't going to put all that money up. Mm. It ain't your peers. Fuck these niggas. You dropping gems. Like, this is so fire. Fuck them. This is fire. Fuck them. That's why, like, and I be, I be feeling so disrespected even as, like, a female in this space, right? Because, yeah, I came in talking my sex shit. Bridget and I have a top 10 music podcast. If you look on the fucking charts, it's we're there. up there with, there. with them there. niggas. Yeah. Guess who don't get recognized when they're talking about how much money people making or what mm -hmm. people doing out here? Y'all, because of the woman. It's okay, but the real people know when they come to my studio, yeah, that was all me, all my money. Me, period. Mm -hmm. Like, and so to me, the respect of what women do in this space, Jamil Hill has a fucking network. Mm. Issa Rae has a network with Sirius, Names. more sauce. Like, no one, for whatever reason, when men get in this on, on their goddamn pot, on, on the mics, and talk about what women are doing in this space, I hate that fucking horrible decisions ain't fucking talked about. Because guess who the fuck been touring since 2017? Mm. Not many pods can go on tours. We got an 18 cities fucking tour coming up this year. Plus, we working on a book. Like, I just hate that nobody wants to acknowledge the women that are really working in this space. Shout out to Cocktails, Poor Minds, Good moms, bad choices. See the thing it's a is, few. it's a few that are work. And it's guess, a lot. And guess who don't get mentioned? No, nah, that's a fact. Ever, even on like, I had to tell somebody about um Angeli Yee podcast. Lip that's service. been years. Years. She was on satellite radio, moved into podcasting. Now she has way up. Still on 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 um, uh iHeart, 
But what lip service has been doing for over 10 years. She opened a lot of doors for everybody, not even just women. No, but just even for having those conversations that so many people are scared to have. And she opened that door. Mm. Like, I don't think there's a horrible decision without her having that. And yes, it's more leaned on the celebrity scape, which we did not. We weren't trying to compete with Angela Lee. That bitch was on Breakfast Club. Ain't no competition. And so that's where we like wanted to dig deeper into just the realm of sex with horrible decisions. But yeah, like y'all better put some motherfucking respect on women's names out here. Mm. Cause women are really out here doing it. Mm. We really are. You we see what Quinta doing? Nah. Oh my God. We Hello. She was like, Oh, you got money. <laughs> Yo, we know that bitch from Twitter. Bro. 2010. That's, that's a movie theater. Crazy. And now she got fucking Abbott Elementary. Like I just hate that when we really talk about what creators are doing for whatever reason, it stays to the Jordan Peels, the Childish Gambinos, the the I mean, even if we go into to, to media, the Trevor Noahs, the Joes, the Norries, the Gilly Wallows. Don't nobody be out here mentioning women and I fucking hate uh, that shit. I mean, yeah, I, hate it. I feel you. When do we get mentioned? Please tell me. So I'm, I'm biased because I'm talking about me. Quinta and Issa's but out there. Even I'm you. I'm biased. I named, so one of my favorite interviewers is Angie Martinez. Which, in, by the way, the fact that she's even transitioned to podcast. IRL, oh, the guest she be get. Wow. So I'm just saying you can't really say that to me because she's one of my favorite interviewers ever. You ready for that? She has what? A 20-year career. <sighs> she has a record with like. I don't know, the Brad, Lil' Kim, all, yeah. she has a Grammy for a record. Yeah. That she, I think she rapped for the first Ladies time. Night. On, Ladies Night, right? Ladies Night. Yeah, yeah. So even that, a cheat code, right? To me, she is an anomaly. What she's done in radio as a woman, her, uh, we talked about uh, Angela, Wendy Williams, those are anomalies to still be in this forefront of this new space of podcasting. Wait, that's right? what I'm saying. Even you, like, not even to say because you're my guest. Like, I mean it. Like, bro, like, yo, just, I'm looking at your Instagram. I don't even usually look at Instagram. I, I do, like, research on YouTube, oh, whatever. This bitch got a bikini on. What this bitch doing? With oh, her? I was going to ask you. <laughs> I was going to ask you. Pass my phone. Go ahead. My phone. Don't do it. Don't, gonna, oh, don't no, do no, it. No, no. Don't do it. You, not, not you getting the phone. When you see, when, you. When, you, when you see this, what, what, what type of, what type of uh, memory does this bring back? Wow. First off, a lace wig and that, them shits is complicated. Um, I mean, that was first off, that was during pandemic. I was bored. I was at home. Nothing else to do. Um, it doesn't bring anything back. I think I still like to live in my femininity and my sexuality at the time. Even I think I had a nigga at that time, actually. So you don't miss um, this, Maddie? You don't be like, because I be having pictures of me. I be like, damn, I miss that. You don't miss that. Oh, bad bitch. I still, that's just a wig on and some and, and some lingerie. I, <laughs> nigga, I could look like that if I put the goddamn lace wig and, and, and the lingerie back on. I mean, to me. Who says you ain't look like that? No, but that's what I'm saying. Like, to me, I don't miss, I don't look back and be like, ooh, let me get back to her. I love the version of myself that I am right now. That's because you're like, getting too I much do. money, bro. I ain't going to hold you. That's because you're getting nice. too much money. It's nice. I, I look back, there's no way I want to go back to what my bank account was in any of my past pictures. Mm. Like, I am at the best version of myself through therapy, financially, how I show up for people, how I how I enjoy myself. I, I used to, like, not like myself a lot mm. in, in many ways. Like, I'm on tour. There's pictures being taken. I just, I love where I'm at. So how much, because everybody always say money ain't nothing, money ain't nothing, right? They, but it was a famous. Because they had it. I was about they to say, there's a famous quote out there. I think Drake said it. Niggas with no money act like money isn't everything. Not you, not you bringing up the quote. I'm yeah. just saying. Um, it's it's a lot easier. Mm. I mean, I have a lot more bills. I ain't going to hold you. When I talk about what my rent is now, that's why I was like, bitch, I can't even be a hoe. When I used to be able to you can get that fuck with a nigga mm -hmm. foe was light. I come to a nigga now like, yeah, so my bills are this a month. You gonna be like, oh nah, you too much. <laughs> um, you have different problems. Like again, like I have way more expenses, but if I want lamb chops, <laughs> if I want to go to Noble, I could on a regular. I whatever I want. The idea that I can go and I don't have to sit here and penny pinch like that's a blessing to me. Mm. Like like I said, and and I've said this on my pods, I've literally been to where I'm like, do I eat 
or do I get toilet paper? I used to go on with my little food stamp cart. So you gonna give me a chopped cheese? You gonna let me get the hot food on this Facts. on this motherfucking snap benefits or nah? Like, and again, even growing up, like food stamps was a big deal. I got free lunch. Uh, holidays weren't much for me. Like, I remember Christmases where I got my fucking gifts in Walmart and Food Lion plastic bags. My mom ain't even wrapped the shit. Like, mm. good morning, here's your gifts. Like. And so to be at a place now where it's like I get to enjoy people for who they are because I'm not opportunistic. I don't want nothing from nobody. I just like good people. Mm. To be able to enjoy life without expecting or want or needing something from someone. To just be able to to get what I choose is like a blessing in itself. And that's where I'm like, this is I want to stay here. I would love more. I love pushing the goalposts. I done made this much, now I want to make this much, now I want to make this much. And I want to be able to, okay, PJ my friends, not first class, let's PJ it. Let's not go to this island, let's she go flexing. to a private island. No, like, let's do the PJ. Well, well, I, I, I'm not there yet. That's what I'm saying. No, I like, but I still, the goalpost keeps moving. So where I was just like, I ain't on spirit no more, I'm in Delta. I'm not in economy, I'm on comfort. Not in comfort, I'm in first. The, like, Delta one, like, I love pushing the goalpost to see what I'm capable of. Mm. And that I think is what ex what's exciting to me. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you. You thought I was gonna be in here talking about the Gulk Gulk 3000? Oh. No, I ain't even going to none of that. <laughs> Look, I was gonna say, I ain't. Even, we've been talking for a hour. I ain't even scratched the surface. Wow, like, but I know you got someone else. I, I feel bad. I know. It's like, bro, it's. I know. So, I hate that I had to come. Nah, nah, nah. Don't even. Ah, but I listen, no, no. First of all, I like. Nah, this is just a book. Okay. Like this is just like I, I'm cool with this because I'm pretty sure that happened again. I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be next to y'all. Hey, mm -hmm. will you you coming to my live show? When is it, man? Friday. This Friday. See. I'll come. I'll come. Okay. What a ticket is that, man? Come on. Got you. Or you can support and purchase them, just like we tell all the people. <laughs> support artists. Don't stream music. Buy it. Just so y'all know. Listen. And now I feel bad for them club promoters back in the day. Like as a as a woman, I get it. You need me in the club. But now that like I'm that person where you no know, buying tickets matters. Like if I don't get a certain amount of tickets sold in this venue, my next tour doesn't isn't able to look like this or my guarantee is less because I wasn't able to sell. Like supporting now for people to me looks so much differently than it did. What time is the show? Eight. Can I get a ticket, but can I just link y'all? Like I'm gonna just link. Yeah, you can Y'all the ticket is just yeah, for the... I, yeah, and I'll put you VIP, you can come and chill with us after. Yeah, just... I'm trying to party. You know I know everybody. I'm trying to be outside. I don't, I don't really think be outside play. like that. Really? I don't like being outside. I'm old, bro. You just be in front of this LED sign? I be working. Talking your shit. I be working. I see you stacked up. I love how you both record like everybody else. Yo, you're funny <laughs> as shit. <laughs> <laughs> ah, no, it's cute. I love it. I'm I am. I hate that I was late because I'm never late. Uh, we went over because I did a lot today, but I'm glad I your energy. I appreciate it's it. It's good. Man. I thank you. I, I really, it's genuine. I fuck with you. Hopefully, I can mend some other relationships. <laughs> oh, you don't. Who you don't fucked up with? Tell me. Whose relationships you want to mend with? Oh, that. One. Oh wow, you crazy. You gonna <laughs> okay, do that? I'm gonna put you on pressure. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh <laughs> I'm about to say, now I don't think nobody else. Who would you like to apologize to publicly? That's okay, crazy, bro. That's <laughs> wild. Don't mind me. I ain't shit. Okay, so you're not going to say sorry? Bet. I'll My bad. I'll, I'll say it. Okay. I'll say it. <laughs> Medina, I, I apologize. I'm sorry. Listen, things happen. Listen, I so upgraded really. Listen, Energy is good here. Listen, come sit I, back. I, 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 I upgraded really fast. And the old footage just ain't look like, wasn't hitting like the new footage, and I wanted you to come back. You get what I'm saying? I apologize. I apologize. It was a lot too. It was too much for me at the time. So, I, you're welcome to come back again. See, I, I love apologize that. on on camera. You just I love that. Ooh, the power of the P, and you ain't even got the P, but you got my presence. There we go. The power of the presence. Power of the P. Presence. No, thank you. I mean, are we ending? Damn, I know yeah, you got somebody yeah, yeah, else. Yeah. All right. Yo. Um, just so you know, I will be back here uh, next month Okay. for Black Effect po Podcast Festival in April. I know. So if you want a part two, if y'all want to hear part two, drop in the comments what y'all want to hear us really get into. I don't mind because energy-wise, professionalism and communication Thank you so was much. great with you. Appreciate that, for real. And that's why I was like, oh, I hate being late. I was chewing it. No, it's all good. It's all good. I appreciate you, man, for real. I just don't want to. 
fuck this up. So that's fine. Don't. Um, thank you. I can't say that enough. Mandy B, uh, J Hill, J Hill podcast, bro. This is amazing. This is even though we ain't getting into everything, just the energy, oh, like we'll you get said, into it. the Part energy. Two. Part two just, coming soon. Thank you so much, man. For real, we out. It's a wrap. Bye.